Your home is your castle. Whether you need a pro or just great advice, your home with Alex Guthrie. Welcome to another edition of Your Home with Alex Guthrie. I am your host, and it is a beautiful day in Big D. I get to look out these windows at that beautiful blue sky. Every day is a special day, a gift that we all get. And as always, I thank you for spending part of that day with me. Thank you so much. Hey, we've got an action-packed day today here on Your Home with Alex Guthrie. I have got every minute of both hours full. We have, we're going to have a conversation with Phil Crone at the DBA in just a minute. We've got Preservation Dallas. We've got Nari. And we have a green tip brought to you by Hargrave Foundation. Hargrave Foundation repaired the original Hargrave established in 1968, 972-442-3415. They're bringing you this green tip today, and it's a water-saving tip. A full bath can take up to 70 gallons to fill, while a five-minute shower uses just 10 to 25 gallons. Better yet, shower with your partner, and together you'll save nearly 100 gallons of water. Now, that is a great tip. I like it. <laughs> Any toilet manufactured before 1992 uses at least three and a half gallons per flush. Modern low flow toilets use less than 1.28 gallons, saving 60% of the water. A new toilet may cost a few hundred bucks but it will save you several thousand dollars in water consumption over its lifetime. According to the EPA, a typical single-family home uses 30% of their water on irrigation to water their lawn. In many cases, more than half of that water is wasted due to evaporation and runoff caused by overwatering. Instead of high-maintenance lush green lawns, consider using the natural landscaping of your region, or at least creating an edible garden to offset your water usage. Thank you, Hargrave Foundation, for that green tip. And now, as soon as Mr. Wells has Phil Crone on the line, we're ready to go on for our community corner with yeah, all over. On, the, uh, on the hotline with Phil Crone from the Dallas Builders Association. Phil is the big dog. That's why I called him. And since we're talking about Patriot Paws, I wanted the big dog. Hey. That's, a nice seg that's a nice segue, Alex. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm learning, buddy. I'm learning. How are you doing? Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing, pretty, I'm doing pretty good out riding my bike, uh, enjoying this weather. How far did you ride? Well, we uh, we're gonna ride 12 miles, and we ran 10 miles today. So uh, my wife is trying to kill me. You you ran 10, and you're gonna ride 12. Are, are you yeah, Are you gonna go smart. swimming after that? No, I'm probably gonna go to sleep. Oh man, come on! You're a young guy. You can do a triathlon. You can be a triathlon. She needs to. She needs to whoop you into shape, son. Yeah, I think she's trying her best at that. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Hey, um, tell us what Patriot Paws is. This is a, a program that the Dallas Builders Association is working on, and I'm really, really impressed with it. I read up, uh, I read your website, and why don't you tell us all about it? Absolutely. Just to put it concisely, it is veterans and puppy dogs, and with that combination, our members can't resist the opportunity to help them out. It is a uh, Rockwall-based 501c3 nonprofit, and they train service dogs, and they go through a two-year program and then get paired with combat-wounded veterans. And many of these veterans have both physical and psychological injuries, so it's not just the extra mobility that these uh, dogs can provide, but it's also the companionship that they can provide, too, and the psychological help that uh, is sometimes just as important as the uh, physical things that they can do. And some of those physical things they can do include 
uh, being able to retrieve the remote, help, uh, you know, zip up your pants, just things that we take for granted every single day that some of these veterans, because of the injuries they've sustained, uh, just don't take for granted and can't do. And it's, it's just an extremely impressive organization. So tell us about the facility. That's, that was really impressive. You bet. We're getting ready to start uh, with the Dallas Builders Association, a project that will rebuild a home. We've already knocked down the old house that they have on their property there, and we're going to rebuild that house. And what that's going to do is it's going to be a facility where the veterans can come and they can stay for two weeks and then get trained with the um, new best friend that they're going to be paired with who's been training for two years. Uh, that facility is going to allow them to be there right on site, uh, right with the Patriot Pod staff and, of course, uh, the new best friend. But it's also going to save them a lot of money in terms of not having to buy a hotel room or um, just have to worry about anything else because a lot of the veterans that they pair with are from out of town. So they can stay on site while they're training with the animals? Definitely. And they can have a nice, quiet place. It's, uh, you know, just, just like home to them. Mm-hmm. and. You know, keep in mind, Alex, I mean, a lot of these, uh, almost all these veterans that we deal with have post-traumatic stress disorder. So being able to be in a nice, quiet place and a, in a safe place just means the world to them in terms yeah. of their peace of mind. That's pretty, that, that's really awesome. So you have, you have, there's two sets of, of training, two types of training going on. There's the, there's yeah. the training for the dogs that are going out and the training for the dogs that are coming back correct? Definitely. And it's, uh, it, it's kind of funny, but also pretty extraordinary that they, they get these dogs when, and this is, our, our members couldn't resist because they came on site the first time and there were a bunch of eight week old, uh, lab puppies running around and, and they were hooked, but those puppies either go to prison or they go to college and there, there are programs in area prisons and there are programs in area colleges. I guess you can argue, which is the, uh, the preferred way to go, but they, uh, those, those puppies get trained and then they go back to the Patriot Paws facility for, uh, finishing school for back of, lack of a better word. And then they finish up their training and then they're ready to go after two years to, uh, be paired with the veteran for the rest of their lives. Wow. That's amazing. That is really, really amazing. And the, the DBA is doing lots of projects with veterans. What are some of the other things that you've been doing? You bet. Our other charity of choice with the Dallas Builders Association is an organization called Operation Finally Home. And Operation Finally Home is mortgage free homes for combat wounded veterans and their families. We uh, finished six, uh, well, I guess we finished five projects. We're getting ready to finish number six up in uh, Little Elm, thanks to Plantation Homes and Hillwood Communities up there at Union Park in Little Elm. In fact, the dedication for that facility will be uh, May 24th, which I think is a Thursday at 10 a.m. up there at, uh, at, at Union Park. We're hopefully to get started on project number seven, uh, working with the city of Irving. So that'll uh, follow shortly thereafter. Wow, that's amazing. And, of course, our our, um, our last, um, uh, oh, the, well, your, your first parade in a long time that we did together and we did a, a remote from was for that very charity. And yeah, it was. And that uh, went we real well. There, didn't we? mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our parade of homes raised uh, just over the for Operation Finally Help. Those uh, funds go to the projects that we're doing here in the Dallas area, help a veteran who is going to uh, live in the Dallas area. And we just appreciate everybody's support uh-huh. on uh, those great, uh, fantastic charities. And you can find more information about them on our DallasBuilders.org uh, website. So is there anything that we can do to contribute to Project uh, to Patriot Paws? Yeah, we have, uh, or actually they have a golf tournament coming out up at uh, Firewheel out in Garland. It is uh, May 15th, and then on uh, May 18th, we're going to have uh, Town Hall, which is just a chance where we bring in vendors and donors and everybody that wants to help out with our project over to the uh, Dallas Builders Association. So uh, contact our office for more information on, on both of those, and those will all raise money for, for this really good cause, and we're, we're just really excited to get started. Phil Crone, you are the EO of the Dallas Builders Association. You are the top dog 
and we appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking time out for us today. My pleasure, Alex. Thanks. Have a good day, and uh, hey, sweat a lot. <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay, that was that was awesome. That's Patriot Pause, and I want to introduce my guest who's been sitting here with me. And if you're if you're watching on Facebook Live, and I forgot to introduce uh, introduce the show, the Facebook Live. If you want, uh, we are on Facebook Live. If you're listening on the radio, you can just go to Facebook to the search window and key in your home with Alex Guthrie, and you can uh, go, whoo, there they are on Facebook Live, looking good on a Saturday. And uh, uh, you can also, if you have a question and you want to send us a question, you can send it on Facebook Live, or you can go to the website, www.yourhomeshow.net. You can get information about the show. You can Send me a question that I won't see today, but I can read on the air next week. Um, You can also uh, call. Well, I'm not going to have lines open today, so I don't want to give the number out because we're just too busy. But my first guest to May is National Preservation Month. And I have always been a huge advocate of preserving old, beautiful homes. It's just the kind of person I am. And my first guest is David Preziosi. And David is the director That's of nice. Preservation Dallas. And I have wanted to have you on the show for a long time. We've had a hard time getting hooked up. That's correct. <laughs> and um, you guys are super busy doing a lot of things. And I wanted, I've wanted to talk about well, I have complained for years and years that we don't save enough of our beautiful old history in Dallas. But before we get into all that stuff, why don't you tell us about Preservation Dallas and what you are? What's your mission? Sure. Preservation Dallas, we're a nonprofit organization, and we've been around since 1972. And our mission is to preserve and advocate um, for the historic buildings, neighborhoods, and sites here in Dallas. And so you're, are you working with the, the property owners or the city or are you a mediary or, a, you know, what do you, how, how does that work? Sure. We work with a whole range of people all the way from property owners, to developers, we work with city, we work with other groups that are also aligned in trying to preserve maybe history here in Dallas. Um, so we have a lot of partnerships. We mm-hmm. do a lot of things with other groups as well to just raise awareness about why it's important to save these historic places in Dallas, which you, as, as you know and pointed out, is dwindling. Yes, And yeah. going away, you know, year after year as, as more development pressure, you know, encroaches in the city and we lose these historic places that aren't protected in some way. Well, and there's, there's lots of different kinds of pressure on these old buildings. There's there's code requirements and there's aging, natural, you know, just aging that happens. And there's lots of reasons it's hard to salvage them. Um, and there's just growth issues. What are the things that you're, what, tell me a couple of the really tough challenges that you're facing as a preservationist in, in a city like Dallas to, to save. Sure. A beautiful old home that may have been built. I've worked on a lot of houses built in the early 1900s or as as far back as pre-1900. There's not very many of them left. Yeah. You know, as you know, Dallas is a very much a, a bigger is better. Go ahead. Bigger is better. Newer is better uh-huh. kind of organi- uh, city. So we have to fight that all the uh-huh. time and trying to um, you know, explain to people why it's important to save these historic places mm-hmm. and hold on to this part of history and our past. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to keep talking about preserving our history. You're listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. We'll be back in just a few Stay tuned. (laughs) 
Alex Guthrie here for my friends at Total Air and Heat. Did you know a typical AC unit runs enough hours in a year equal to a car running 60,000 miles? Total Air and Heat recommends that you tune your system and have it safety checked every six months to ensure peak efficiency, proper operation, and increase the life of the system. Need a new air conditioning and heating system? No problem. Total Air and Heat can replace your equipment with the best equipment on the market today. Train! And you know it's hard to stop a train. So for the best heating and air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020. Or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by the Spice and Tea Exchange at 319 South Main Street. In mid-November of 1845, settlers from Missouri, the Archibald Leonard family, BJ and Hiram Crowley, Ambrose Foster, and the family of Judge Jacob Moorhead settled near Lonesome Dove. Two years later, the Lonesome Dove Baptist Church was established south of Judge Moorhead's place near Grapevine. I'm Nancy McBrayer for the Spice and Tea Exchange. We started in Fort Worth and just really loved the Grapevine area. We wanted to capture the folks that were from Dallas that came to the stockyards that said, oh, this is so far for us. And Grapevine is such a beautiful area. We decided that that was a perfect place for our second location. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. I'm Nancy McBrayer for the Spice and Tea Exchange. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. Some people think the only thing worse than calling the dentist is calling the foundation repair man. That's why I recommend Hargrave Foundation Repair. Cracks in the walls? Doors that won't close? Give the folks at Hargrave Foundation a call. Now sometimes it's not the foundation at all. That's why you need an honest, proven company. You see, understanding the soils and weather is a must for a lifetime repair. Family owned and operated since 1968, Hargrave has seen it all. Hargrave Foundation Repair is fully licensed and insured, and their staff stays up to date on all the latest techniques and advances. So call one of the last independently owned foundation companies in North Texas and the exclusive installer of the Chance Helical Pier System. Call Hargrave Foundation Repair at 972-442-3415. That's 972-442-3415. Hargrave Foundation Repair, 972-442-3415. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We're here talking about preser- preserving preser- uh, preserves, not preserves, preserving, <laughs> preserving our homes and our properties and our buildings. It's not just homes; it's buildings. Sure, it's our past. Mm-hmm. I wrote an article for a magazine a few years ago about this very thing and how our our buildings, our, an old home, or our old homes in particular, are a picture of our history, a picture of our past. And our, just like our new homes are a snapshot of our history, and, and it's, it's truly a snapshot of our history. Houses built around World War II were built with concrete and because during a right at certain points world war ii you couldn't get wood because they were using all the wood to build ships that wasn't available i know this because i've remodeled some of those houses and they were concrete (laughs) or plaster and, and steel um houses built in the 30s and before were all wood and were built a certain way to take advantage of the uh, the environment in a way that we've now come full circle and we're doing now to save money on energy. Back right. then, we didn't have central air and heat and all that kind of stuff. Right. Right? And everything is a snapshot of our history. And so when we start tearing these things down, 
we're kind of saying bye-bye to our past. That's correct. And, you know, we, we also look at it, too, as, you know, this is it's a tapestry, and we have to have all of these different styles and errors, and it makes neighborhoods and places unique and makes people want to live there. A lot of our older neighborhoods also have wonderful tree, tree canopy, again, that helps with cooling sure. and energy efficiency. Um, a lot of people just appreciate that style from those periods, um, a little different than today. And it really just gives us a whole wide range of places that people can live. And you don't always have to be in a modern house. You can be in an old house. Some people like that. Mm -hmm. And so we, we just want to preserve that. And I think the other thing we have to look at, too, is that, you know, by holding on to these older houses and remodeling them and saving them, you know, that's, that's less trash that goes to the landfill, less, you know, embodied energy that's being demolished and mm -hmm. destroyed. So we're really helping the environment too, by helping to save and reuse these houses instead of just throwing them away for, for new ones. So what there, there's some alternatives to having to dump a bunch of money into an old house on its lot. You can relocate it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the options for people? What, well, before I start throwing options, I'm going to ask you, what are the options for people? Because you, you might buy an old house in a great neighborhood and you go, boy, I, I can't dump all that my money into this old house. It's not going to get where I need it to be. Yeah, I mean, there's some things that can be done with old houses as far as additions and remodeling that can help make it work for your lifestyle. But I think also, too, you know, you need to, when you are going to buy a house, you need to look at that and say, is this going to work for me or not work for me? Uh, and, and some may not. Um, you know, there is the option of relocating houses, but it's a little difficult to, and expensive to mm -hmm. do that in some instances. Um, you know, we'd rather not see houses demolished and new ones put up um, because usually, typically, that changes the scale and the, the neighborhood and changes the look of the neighborhood. Um, but we know, you know, especially in North Dallas, there's a lot of that going on right now where older homes, smaller homes from the 50s to the 70s are being torn down and much larger homes are being um, put up in their place. And, you know, usually another story taller or maybe story and a half taller and lot line to lot line. Taking, taking the lots, of, <clears throat> they don't have any lot left. Right. I mean, they right. build to, to the maximum <clears throat> allowed. Sure. But then it's a different, again, when we're talking about a snapshot of our history, they're building a house to the way we live now right. because they're not out in the yard playing, unfortunately. That's great. <laughs> they're not yeah. out in the yard playing. They're yeah. inside. They're building a the house to live in instead of building a house to live outside. So, you know, times are different. Right. It's a change yeah. in the way we live today sure. versus we lived in the 30s, sure. 40s, 50s. Uh, you know, and going back to that whole uh, uh, energy thing back in the 30s when they didn't have air conditioning, they were outside more. Right. And the, the houses were designed to cool, keep cool as much as possible as you could back then. And well, so I think we of, were tougher. Yeah, I think so, too. I grew, I grew up in a house that did not have air conditioning. And, um, you know, I lived. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think most people could, could handle that right now in, in you know, today we're just, um, I don't think I could. I yeah. mean, I could, but I wouldn't like it. Right? <laughs> well, you know, it was really the, the advent of uh, air conditioning that helped bring more people to the South and to, you know, Dallas sure. and Texas sure. and made it more easy for more people to live in That's this, true. this environment. So that has also brought people to, you know, to uh -huh. this area and increased our, our numbers. So the cities have changed the the building codes and, and made changes in their requirements that make it more difficult to keep an old house a lot of times. I mean, there it's just not as easy as it used to be. You have to upgrade windows. You have to upgrade electrical. You have to upgrade all kinds of stuff, insulation, all kinds of things. And, and so... And so uh, sometimes the, it's cost prohibitive. I mean, if someone will buy a house and maybe they don't intend on doing a whole lot of stuff to it. And then they get in the middle of it and they go, and, and it may be before they, they start any work, but they, they start, they find out at some point they have to dump a bunch of money into a house. And I've run into this with people where they start getting the price for the remodel and they go, wow, it might be better to just tear it down and build a new house. This is not uncommon. It happens all the time. Sure. So 
what are we what's your advice to somebody i mean you so you go do you go through a process should they call someone like you and say help we really want to keep the house but what's your advice to someone like that well i think uh the first thing is to have a good home inspector before you buy the house well so you well, know you, you know what you you're gonna that's get into true when that's you, true you, that's good advice house, yep. an old house yep um you know, there are, if you are in a historic district in certain parts of the city, there's are um, tax incentives for uh, work that you do to, mm -hmm. to your house. So you can apply for those through the city and get some relief on your property taxes for maintaining and doing work to mm -hmm. uh, historic places, historic buildings. Um, you know, I think there's different ways you can upgrade houses without having to spend a ton of money. Um, and internet is great for that and we've got some resources at our office too as as well you know you don't always have to replace windows you can install storm windows to make to bring up that efficiency if you want to get that um you know insulation and things like that can be done very uh, relatively cheaply too as well to help with your energy efficiency okay well we're going to take a quick break and when we come back on the other side we're going to start talk we're going to talk a little bit about um other concerns that the city's had and some things that they've done to try and control and kind of slow down some of these teardowns that they've got some some demolition delay districts and and some progressive moves that they've made over the last really three or four years to sort of kind of control some of the these teardowns in in, in certain parts of the town downtown oak cliff east dallas so when we come back we're going to continue with Preservation Dallas. Don't go away. Hey, travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right, call, because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. Again, that's 800-871-3291. With the introduction of digital TV, it's more important than ever to make the best decisions when disposing of your old electronics and your televisions, too. Television and electronic recycling is easy and good for the environment. So if you can't reuse your old TV, then recycle it. Simply drop off your television along with any other electronics at a convenient electronic recycling event. Every first, second, and third Saturday, an event is held in Plano. Find resources and information to learn green, live green, and save a little green, all at the click of a mouse. LiveGreenInPlano.com. The Cup Series rolls into Dover. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Jimmy gets the break. Larson to the outside. Truex there as well. NASCAR stars try to outrun each other. Easier said than done when you're face-to-face -face with a monster. In Dover. We're going to wad up about a half a dozen. Now make it a dozen cars. The AAA 400 Drive for Autism. Johnson will surge forward. He'll go to the lead. Sunday at noon on the Motor Racing Network. NASCAR from the Monster Mile tomorrow at noon on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. That was a short break, but we made a ton of money, I'm sure. <laughs> That's the objective, anyway. I'm here with David Preziosi from Preservation Dallas. Thank you for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to talk about these uh, demolition overlays because for some people, I guess they're great, and for others, they don't understand them. And I went through, I went into the Dallas, uh, City of Dallas website and kind of tried to figure them out, and they didn't seem too complicated to me, but I can see where they could be a little bit um, frustrating 
to people. And I could see where they could be taken advantage of by people if they wanted to get political with them. I don't know if that's happened or if, or not, but um, I know that it could be frustrating, and, and particularly if you're, if for instance, if you buy a property and you have a bank loan and you have a certain amount of time to close on a loan to build a property, and the city goes, oh, by the way, we're gonna we're gonna delay your demolition and they start doing stuff like that that could be a problem i don't i'm not smart enough to know about that stuff but i don't know you should be able to know that going in but i don't know (laughs) so uh, my first question is explain the the demolition of this demolition it's called an overlay plan what what is exactly does that mean so it's actually called demolition delay overlay Mm -hmm. and it was uh, first uh, established by the city back in 2015 for uh, most of the greater downtown area and a portion of uh, North Oak Cliff Uh, and then this year it was expanded just approved by the city council last month uh, to include more of Oak Cliff, Oak Lawn and uh, a large section of East Dallas and the theory behind the demolition delay overlay is to give um, the city and others a chance uh, when there's a demolition uh, permit uh, that's applied for uh, to review it and to have some input and say. Um, And this is mainly a response off of the 2014 demolitions in downtown Dallas that occurred, you know, four major buildings on the National Register of Mm Historic Places. A demolition permit was pulled on a Friday. Demolition was started on a Sunday. There was no notice. There was a lot of a lot of people that were upset about it, especially you know, kind of the kind of a, a redefinition of a midnight move. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the procedure that's been established is that if uh, you are in, if the property is in the one of those areas, uh, and a demolition permit is requested, there's a 10-day hold put on the building to see if it qualifies. So, the application will be forwarded to the Historic Preservation Office in the City of Dallas. And they will look to see if it qualifies. Uh, and to qualify, the building has to be at least 50 years or older. And it has to meet one of four different criteria as far as being on a survey, being on the National Register, uh, and a couple of other things. But if it does not meet any of those criteria, if it's less than 50 years old, the permit can be issued um, uh, right away. If it does meet one of those criteria, then it goes into a 45-day hold period the uh, property is posted with a sign that's under demolition review Uh, and then during that time the city has to have at least one public meeting with the property owner as well as any interested parties or public that want to attend that meeting and talk talk about alternatives so it's similar to to a, a, a zoning request Sure. In that same type of... Right, right. If you're okay. going for a rezoning or uh-huh. something, a variance of some kind where you have to go through, mm-hmm. through a process. And, um, you know, now that this area has been established, people that are now buying in those areas will know that this is a possibility. And they can also do their due diligence ahead of time and, and see if it does qualify. And if it does, then they can build that into their Build that schedule, into their plan, sure. Um, for that so that it doesn't 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 hold them up Um, you know this does not prevent demolition it doesn't stop it it does slow it down for 45 days Uh, and you know it only applies to a small percentage of buildings actually what is the what's the idea what is the point of this the idea is to one give the public some idea of what's going on uh, and two to give the preservation community and others a chance to work with these property owners to see if they can find an alternate solution to to demolition and that has occurred several times we've been able to uh, one house was moved another one the uh, property owner decided to sell to somebody who was going to restore the building instead of demolish it and another one he d- decided that he wanted to restore the building and work on it instead of taking instead it of demolishing it yeah and, and so it's got, there's been 84, how many, how many reviews have there been? Um, I don't know totally how many there have been. I know there have been about six that have gone to the 45-day delay uh-huh. hold, and about okay. half of those were saved, and the others, um, the 
couldn't come to an agreement with the property owner, mm -hmm. so the demolition permit. So it doesn't really issued. prevent. They, I don't think they can really prevent anybody from no. doing anything to a piece of property they own. So the idea is, is to maybe encourage them to right. take a different path, or sure, just maybe open their eyes. Right. Right. You know, and it could be a different solution. Let, let's like save a portion of the building and redevelop mm -hmm. it into the new, um, you know, the new development, like. Uh, the developers doing with the um, old Dallas uh, Independent School District headquarters. You know, they're saving that central portion of the building. They're going to develop the mm -hmm. apartment complex around it, incorporate, you know, the architectural elements into the new design so that there's a mix of, you know, you've and, got a little bit of the old and a little bit of the well, new. Well, and that's not, mm -hmm. that's not an unusual thing. Right. If you go down around Sale Street and Swiss Avenue, there's been a lot of developments where they've developed around older homes or right. redeveloped old homes. And right. In fact, the building you're in, yep. your organization's at, how old is, is that? 1899. 1899. And you all, you, you uh, I guess, just brought it back to its glory, right? right. That was the Meadows Foundation that, that mm -hmm. restored all those buildings over there in the Wilson Block area of Sis Avenue. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so, um, so, the, so you're not, it's not an anti, it's not an anti-builder or anti-growth Thing. It's not anti anything. It's just sort of maybe maybe helping somebody take a different right. view. It's more like we want to have a conversation about it, uh -huh. and um, you know when you can when you can apply for a permit and be it issued right away. There's no chance for discussion. So this way, at least gives us a little bit of time to discuss it. Maybe find an option or alternative or something that can uh, incorporate the building. Did. Do you do you feel like it's having a positive effect? Oh sure, I think so. You know, definitely. Like I mentioned, it saved at least three, and we hopefully uh -huh. it will save more. And are there the are there is there some <clears throat> expectation or some goal that you're trying to achieve? I'm, did you do you guys did you look at this and go, you know, maybe we can save half of the buildings, or or is there any goal to it, or is it just let's just let's just look at it let's just create a way to to slow this process right. down you know i think a goal for us if we, if we save any if you just <laughs> say right. yeah if, if we, we save, just save one right yeah. you know then that was one that we didn't lose right uh, right you know we hope we can save more in the future or maybe developers will be more proactive and say well instead of tearing this down let me figure out a way i can reuse it and, or move it or incorporate it or do something instead of just <laughs> tear it down and start. From I, I can tell you lots of several stories over the years when I've remodeled homes where we've found notes in the walls from sure when guys, you know, back when they used to put plaster in them and they, you, they put paper and they would put newspaper behind them. Right. And we would find notes. We found notes. I still have some where guys would write notes and then stuff them in there and then they'd plaster the walls and we'd tear yeah. the plaster off. And you, you know, you just fall in love with the whole yeah. restoration process because sure. you feel like you're working on a really wonderful old piece of furniture. Right. I've worked on houses in Van Alstine that are. Were, were old Sears and Roebuck kit houses. The sure. houses that there are these beautiful old Victorian looking houses that were actually brought in on a rail car and in, in bundles that they yeah. built on site. I worked on one that had, that had been in a fire and they moved it for some reason. I, I, when they rebuilt it, they moved it to the other side of the lot. And we worked on it years later for a young home, a young couple that bought it, and they would hire me every year. They'd save their money, and every year they'd call me every couple of years and say, "Okay, we saved enough money to to do, <laughs> do this, more, and we'd come more. and do yeah. a little more." And and it, you know, was really a, a and it was a long drive, but I loved the house so much I didn't care. You right. know, we just loved doing it. So it becomes this passion. It does, and you feel like you're really doing something worthwhile. And I can't. I'm really with you on this idea that it's great to save these houses, but then there's some of them that aren't great to save. There's some of them that it's just not practical, and you have to look at them and go, well, it might meet some of these things, and it might be 100 years old, and it might have some great attributes, but then it might have too many bad things going on where you just – 
it, it just doesn't make sense to save it. So maybe what you do is you salvage it. Maybe you salvage the material, salvage the windows, and someone else can use the parts of it. Right. That's correct. Do you ever encourage things like that with people? Uh, we only as a last resort. <laughs> of course, you know our mission is to your keep building mission standing. is to not tear it down. Your mission, <laughs> so our is, mission is not to right, tear them down. Right. Um, you know, but we do. If a building does have to come down, yes, we want to see the parts recycled mm -hmm. and used rather than being thrown out and uh, into the dump. And a lot of these materials are very, uh, you know, good materials. That, you know, you working on houses, you know, the difference between wood from the early 1900s versus wood you can get today and how dense it is mm -hmm. and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So there's, there's no comparison. You can't get that today. Right. And so, you know, there's a different quality. And if you can reuse those materials, of course, it saves us again from having to cut down more trees and, and, and you know, manufacture new things and if we can reuse what, what was already how is it? How is the city working with these neighborhoods and these people? Is the city a partner in this? Do they, you know, are they sometimes, – sometimes the city has good intentions, but it's really difficult for them to step out of their comfort zone. Sure. You know, it's hard for a, a bureau, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not trying to be ugly here, but it's hard for a bureaucrat to leave his book at the office, if you know what I mean. Right, right. And I can't speak for the, all of the departments in the city, but, you know, we work closely with Sustainable Development and Construction and the Historic Preservation Division there. And they do have, um, and they do work with property owners, especially the ones that are in historic districts when they come in and they are going to be doing work to their house and guiding them through the process and, you know, saying, well, this might work or this won't work and, and giving them ideas and suggestions. So when they get to the approval phase, that they can get through it um, uh, much easier. Uh, and then again, like I mentioned earlier, the tax incentives that are out mm -hmm. there for historic properties that are in historic districts or other areas of, of the city that are um, individual landmarks, um, the city does offer that and you can work through economic development and get those tax incentives um, to help offset the cost for maintaining. So there's historic. several different layers of, hi of historic uh, building of, um, what am I trying to say? Designations. There. Designations. There Thank you. you. <laughs> wow, you read my mind. You poor, you poor guy. You got through there. Um, let's talk about those sure. designations sure. because that's a, that's really important yeah. in this whole process. Right. Well, there's actually three levels of designations, historic designations for a building. You can have it on the city level, the state level, and the federal level. And so uh, we'll start from the top and go down. The federal level is the National um, Register of Historic Places, which is, is really almost an honorific listing. It doesn't really give you any um, local protections, um, but it does provide access to tax incentives and tax credits on the federal level as well as the state level. Uh, and then you have the state level, which can be a recorded Texas historic landmark or a state antiquities landmark. And those are, uh, you know, important places to Texas, like Fair Park. That's mm -hmm. a... That's a um, State antiquities landmark, uh, and then you have the local level, which are your local historic districts or your properties that are individually listed as a city of Dallas uh, landmark. And so, protections from the building come at the local level. So it's through an ordinance that's passed, a historic preservation ordinance, which the city of Dallas has, and then they adopt the historic districts, which then have a set of guidelines that you're supposed to follow uh, when working on the exterior of your house or building. Uh, and then you also have um, conservation districts as well, which are sort of just a level below historic districts, but they provide some protections. Um, uh, Mostly for the envelope of the building. Right, it's right. usually Never like the a interior, street view. Right. You know. Just the exterior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it could be site features as well as like fences and mm -hmm. pools and landscaping. It depends. You know, a lot of the districts are different. Mm -hmm. Well, the different. conservation districts are really important. It's almost like a homeowners association without really being a homeowners association. It, right. it protects a, a whole yeah. block of neighborhoods. Yeah. And I've had to deal with them. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's really not that bad. And at the end of the day, you're happy with what you get. If you're the property owner or the contractor, we're going to take a quick break. and we come back, more with Preservation Dallas and David Preziosi. Preziosi. Excuse me. <laughs> we'll be right back.
So what does a garage door do besides enhance your home, protect your family, and secure your vehicles? But when you contact the pros at Windsor Door, you'll learn how a truly high-quality garage Garage door company can make a difference. Insulated doors, carriage style doors, steel and custom wood, Windsor Door has them all and much, much more. And nothing makes a garage door work better than a high quality opener. That's why the folks at Windsor Door only use LiftMaster garage door openers. And it's no wonder LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Only LiftMaster has patented MyQ technology, which alerts you if you forget to close your garage door and lets you close it from anywhere, anytime with built-in Wi-Fi technology. It also has battery backups, so you can get in even when the power's out. So contact a Windsor Door dealer near you at WindsorDoor.com. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas, brought to you by Grapevine Antique Market. In 1866, the Grapevine Masonic Lodge is organized. J.W. Dunn is the first worshipful master. In 1867, they decide to build a school. Pine lumber is hauled by ox teams over 150 miles from the mills in East Texas. School begins in September of 1869. Colonel W.P. Bishop is principal. The school remains open until 1886. Hi, I'm Brandon Cantrell with Grapevine Antique Market. We sell vintage items, antiques, and a lot of current decorative items. Very cool. My husband lived here when I got married 33 years ago. It's a small town feeling, although it's not that small anymore. I've just gotten to know Grapevine, and I have lots of friends here, and I like it. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. Oh, I had my joints all ached. I, my fat and nerve was really bad. Like 10 hours, my eyes were so tired and heavy and almost burning. And then when I woke up in the morning, there was this nagging pain. I mean, it hurt to open them. And just in a week, like, I don't have the nagging pain anymore. My joints stopped hurting, and I'm in wood season. I'm lugging wood right now, and I'm not hurting. So that's, like, amazing for me. I'm usually really suffering. It's pretty effective. And so now, like I said, my husband and I are both taking it, and he even said his joints aren't aching as much, and he's feeling better. Good health is only a phone call away. What are you waiting for? Don't miss your opportunity to get a free month's supply of Balance of Nature. Call 1-800-2468-751. That's 1-800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code USA. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We're covering some very important stuff here. Preserving things. And not the kind of preserving that goes on your toast in the morning. The kind of preserving that we we all want to live with. And David and I were just talking about the difference in taking a house uh, when I was a young guy cut my teeth in this business and we when we went took an old house and we were remodeling it to bring it back to its day we weren't you know it was a house that was built in the 1920s or 30s and we were trying to just get it back to its original glory and uh it's a whole different world than it is now and so uh i really love what you're doing and unfortunately we're going to run out of time, and I want to talk about your events sure, that are coming sure. up. So you have yeah. a, the 2018 Spring Architectural Tour. That's correct. Let's, yeah. let's talk about your, your stuff. Sure. That's coming up on Saturday the 19th, and uh, this year we're featuring Art Deco houses, which are you know built in the 1930s to 1940s, sort of the first American modern style that, that we had, you know, really modern and cutting-edge style that we had. and. Um, we're going to feature five houses on the tour. It goes from 10 to 2, uh, and it's um, tickets are $35 for members, $50 for non-members, and it's a self-guided tour. We give you a tour map, and we give you information about the houses, and it's a really wonderful way to explore 
some really unique I went houses. on your website and you can go on your website mm-hmm. and you can see sure. the houses and man I love yeah. those houses. They're very unique and we don't have a lot of them here in Dallas right. which is which is very interesting, you know. Everybody thinks of Art Deco and they think of Fair Park, you know, right. 1936 and all the wonderful buildings out there. So, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, residential uh, mm-hmm. uh, examples of that, so we're going to be featuring those. And uh, in a very well. really in just in the older part of town, do we have any of that that type of building so you've only got five on your your tour right, right and i'll tell you folks i would take advantage of that yeah because we don't know how much longer we'll have them <laughs> how many more tours we're going to be right. able to have That's right. to have that five yeah and if you go on uh preservation org, correct and look at these they're just really st- it just made me want to go right well good <laughs> What's next? So also we have our Preservation Achievement Awards this month as well, coming up a few days before the uh, tour on the 16th. Uh, And we're doing that at uh, Factory 603, which is the old West End Marketplace, and a really wonderful example of like you said, sort of taking taking the 80s out of the building and getting it back to the 1920s uh-huh. and 1930s when the building was built. Uh, and so uh, we have 22 projects getting awards this year. We're wow. going to be recognizing uh, Matthew Southwest for their work that they've done on South Side of Lamar, the Nyla Hotel, just recently the old Dallas High School and bringing that back to life and also restoring the original Pegasus sign, which is in front of the Omni now. So, <laughs> Pegasus sign. Yeah. You know. I've chased that thing all over town in my lifetime. It has been, it used to be the only thing you saw in downtown. Sure. I mean, we just didn't think, you know, it was just there. Right. And then they kept covering it up with buildings right. and then they took it down for a while. And then somebody got it and put it up somewhere and it's been moved. That sign has got more miles on it. That's right. <laughs> well, it, the original sign is the one in front of the Omni and the one uh-huh. on top of the Magnolia building is a replica that was installed in 2000. Is it? So. It, yeah. it, it's really it's really amazing and and folks should go see it and go see the original right. because that is a real big part of Dallas history it sure is it's been around a long time it was a symbol for downtown you know, like you uh-huh. said everybody could see it from miles away lit up the red we were real proud of it when I was growing up uh, the Pegasus sign and then Southwest uh, insurance building was the tallest building in the southwest southland southland i'm sorry southland that's right southland Southland life and uh it was the tallest building in the southwest and we were all proud of it right you drive down central express when you go look at that (laughs) yeah and if you went to oklahoma city you'd brag about it that's right (laughs) we've got the tallest building and then one of the um one of the uh big I don't know if it's a controversy, but a huge discussion in the preservation world in Dallas is Fair Park. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because everybody's trying to figure out what to do with it. Right. If- you know, what are we going to do with Fair Park? It's old, what, 1936? Yeah. It actually, some of those buildings actually date before that. Uh, and uh, some of them were reskinned in 1936 mm-hmm. to have the Dart Deco style that the planners wanted for, uh, for the world's uh, centennial, uh, it's Texas centennial. Um, and so, you know, right now the city is, is, is finalizing who's going to manage that. And they're supposed to be announcing that this summer, which of the three management groups that apply to, to manage the park will get that. Uh, and then their job, once they get it, will be to help um, bring more people to the park. There's already a lot of people coming to Fair Park, but they want more. Uh, and to use the buildings um, more throughout the year, uh, as well as we just passed, the city just passed the bond package in uh, last November. So there's $50 million for restoration of the buildings, which has been badly, badly needed. Um, there's still a lot more needs. So this management group will hopefully be able to raise the funds to really make the buildings come back to life. Let's tell people how to get in touch with your organization and sure preservationdallas.org is our website you can find all our information there <laughs> well really appreciate you coming on today and spending some of your day with right. us and Thanks uh for having me i hope you have a wonderful weekend all right thank, thank you. you so much okay we're going to take a quick break when we come back nori dallas is going to be in here and it's going to be a wild one stay tuned we'll be right back
Your home is your castle. Whether you need a pro or just great advice, your home with Alex Guthrie. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We are here with Nari Dallas. I've got the who's who of Nari Dallas. And I had to, uh, well, building management almost called the cops. These people are wild. <laughs> we don't have a green room anymore. That's not green, is it, J.D.? No, they took care of that. They've been in there all morning partying. <laughs> um, I'm here with Botand Laszlo, the president of Nori. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Marvelous home makeovers. And you've got, a, I looked at your website. It's, that's pretty awesome. You do beautiful work. Thank you. You're an, you're an amazing guy. And Shiloh Preston with the Kitchen Source. And Kitchen Source has been around a long time. They have. And what do you do at Kitchen Source? I am one of the kitchen and bath designers. You are. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I looked at your guys' website. Of course, I used to work with the Kitchen Source 100 years ago. <laughs> and um, and uh, you guys do beautiful work. And then back in the background, our, uh, our guard, see our guard? She's going to keep us in line. Kim Savelsberg, with uh, she's the Nari, and your director or executive officer, executive director. I, just, I have EO. I never know what you guys are. You're <laughs> the big boss. And um, I've been wanting to get you guys on for a long time. We've we've uh, we're all trying to get our schedules together, but I know you guys are all all super super busy with this uh, economy going hot and heavy and all this building going on and a lot of remodeling going on. And, uh, and uh, NARI is the National Association of Remodeling Industry. That's correct. Correct. Right? Absolutely. And so why don't you explain to us exactly what that means? So as the name stands for National Association of the Remodeling Industry, it's is the only association for the remodeling firm so remodeling remodeling industry remodeling companies uh, suppliers and um, it's different from being a home builder because we all do remodeling so kind of put it in perspective remodeling is sort of as a surgery right you go into homes a lot of times when people live in there with their families with their dogs and um, you're working in a living environment so that's why remodeling is very different from a new construction standpoint, and I know you dabbled with that a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but really, people remodel a lot more than build new homes. It's just more existing homes always, right? Right. And um, as, as you're probably aware of this year, projected um, overall industry projected um, revenue in the industry nationwide is north of $400 billion, yeah. but a B. Yeah. So um, if you think about it, we we are a really important part of that. And I uh, think the average, what's the average? The average is, is the average price of that is, is small. It's just tons of it. And I mean, they the average price of a remodel is not a big dollar amount. There's just tons of it. Of course, it's just the big dollar amounts, but but uh, there's a lot of people that do lots of things that we call remodeling. Absolutely. So remodeling, it can go from basic um, handyman work mm -hmm. um, all the way up to doing, you know, multi-million dollar projects. So you're talking about, you know, anywhere from pro potentially, you know, a couple of hundred dollar projects to multi-million dollar or projects. It can, it can be a couple of hundred dollar project that turns into a multi-million dollar project if, <laughs> if the wrong guy does it or person. <laughs> we, we've all seen that happen. <laughs> I haven't had one of those clients yet, but uh, uh, I yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they're your favorite client and sometimes they're not. <laughs> so, um, our, and locally, we... Dallas has always been interesting to me because Dallas has this, always has this hot new home market. North Texas does because North Texas has always had this uh, huge availability of development land. 
and so and affordable housing. So there's always been this competition between um, new homes and and I'm talking about larger remodels. Mm -hmm. You could go out and you could buy a a reasonably priced home, or you could spend money remodeling your house the same amount of dollars. In other words, if you had a two thousand foot house and you were going to spend a whole bunch of money on it and get the value to that house to a certain point, or you you would say, or I could go just buy a new house. And there's there's always been that competition. And Dallas is, is a unique market in that way. There's some markets where you, you don't even consider that because the new housing is so expensive that you, or there's no room to build. Mm -hmm. You know, to build a new house, you just have to go so far away for, you know, a market like Portland or Seattle where they don't have anywhere to build. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we're hitting a unique time right now, I believe, where the home prices in Dallas have gotten so high. The property values are so high and we're building so far out now we've already built up basically inside the city mm -hmm. that I think the remodeling and I know I'm getting calls and I'm, I know you guys are to do really larger projects. I haven't been getting all those calls recent, uh, uh, you know, last few years, but mm -hmm. now I'm starting to, and I know these trends because I've been doing it for so many years. I see these trends during these hot markets with new homes all of a sudden they're a little less affordable or a little less desirable for whatever reason. could mm -hmm. be a recession. It could just be interest rates. Who knows? People start calling their contractors going, well, we've decided to remodel. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that trend? Absolutely. And in fact, uh, two weeks ago, we were in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina for the Natty, uh, National Spring Business Meetings, and um, our chapter was, was very well represented. And we were just talking about um, earlier today, actually, how how unique um, the DFW market is. And, and not just DFW, but the whole Texas, North Texas market. And it's unique in a sense of uh, just a lot more going on, mm -hmm. Te technologically more advanced, uh, more... Um, definitely a lot more money if mm -hmm. you're talking about that, you know, putting the four, 400 plus billion dollars in perspective. And um, we also seeing this within the industry, and I'm, and I'm speaking on behalf of Nadi, but also as a contractor, that we're really seeing that we're pushing the boundaries of what's really possible on a national level. Uh, we competing, obviously, so to speak, competing, right? Because um, we all trying to raising the bar or want to build something bigger, better, making ultimately our clients' life better, mm -hmm. safer, um, creating an environment where they can, you know, truly enjoy growing up and raising their kids. So, but um, answering your question, do we see the trend? And, and yes, we do. It's absolutely, um, there's, a, there's a growing trend of people staying put in their place, in, in their homes. And, and really, you know, I always say, house it's a house but a home is really when you put your final touches on it mm -hmm. and and people are starting to see that you know like they love the neighborhood they mm -hmm. they love their neighbors they have you know the kids hanging out with their kids so kind of i'm starting to see people people thinking about well you know generations ago we were able to run around the street and it was all fine and people are all, all in a sudden like well we'd love to have that i love the neighborhood i want to stay here i know in a lot of cases you know we have clients who um, spend a lot more in some cases than what the neighbor could can afford, mm -hmm. but that ultimately raises the neighborhood value. Then the, you know, the well, and that's that. their commitment to their long term. Absolutely, and and that's the discussion that you and I have with people all the time. I just had it last week with someone, but ultimately that's a decision that that they're going to look at you and me and go, "What would you do? Would you invest in?" If in this house, if it was you, I, I get that all the time. And I used to just go, I don't know, call your real, call your realtor. <laughs> but you know, that, that decision comes down to, are you going to stay? And you get this too, because you're, you're doing their kitchen. You're doing the heart of the house. Right. Right. right? Yeah. It, you know, it's interesting because just to tag on what Oton was talking about, you know, I was th thinking about this the other day. 
a real estate agent sells you what I call a box of potential. Uh, if it's in the right location, mm -hmm. it's near the right schools. Um, what you do inside that box is what we do as remodelers. So oh. you get to customize it, uh -huh. and make it what you want. And there, I don't know that they, somebody else can put their rules on you as far as what you're going to spend on that. Mm -hmm. um, I've done projects where the kitchen and the main floor remodel cost as much as the house, but they'd lived there. They'd raised their kids there. It's just like you said, it was a cul-de-sac. All their friends were there. Uh, so that was the right decision. It's where their life them. is. Right. It's where your life is. Right, right. And so they go, well, we don't want to. We don't want to outspend the neighborhood. Right. We might sell in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Well, I, a comet might hit the earth tomorrow. I don't know. How to, <laughs> I don't know how to give you good advice on that, you know. Right. right. Uh, do what you want to do. Exactly. It's if still expensive. Fun. It's not cheap. Do what you want to do. Right. And do if you in, instead of doing three rooms, if you don't have if that's stretching you too thin, do one room really well. Yeah. Be happy with it. Yeah. And do the next room next year. Well, and it's it's how you want to live. It's what mm -hmm. do you want your experience to right. be? And just like you said, I mean, if you're doing this as an investment, and you know, this is this is to turn and make some money, then yeah, your decisions are going to be different. But exactly. If this is a, a space that you're going to live your life, what do you want that experience to right. be? And you have to decide for yourself. Exactly. Exactly. So the trending that I'm starting to see is people are feeling a little, I think we came out of, uh, out of a recession <laughs> and people were like really nervous. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the feeling I got mm -hmm. because I came out before the recession, people were calling me wanting their dream kitchen, their dream bathroom. You know, it was like money's no object, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you want. Let, let's do, and we, we would be in a house for two, three years. And then after the recession, it was only what they had to do. I'm not doing anything else because everybody was just really sitting on pins and needles. Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting, I'm not getting the dream kitchen calls. You guys probably get them. I don't, but I'm starting to get more calls about more permanence type projects. Yeah. And I'm having more of those conversations than I've been having. Are you? Oh, absolutely. And and talking about the recession, being involved in the industry for a number of years now, um, and and I actually had my business during the recession. It it's really interesting again how unique the DFW market is, because yes, to some degree, everybody noticed things you know dropped a little bit. People were a little bit more cautious. Just kind of going into the unknown, right? It's always, there's always a gamble and you want to be cautious. You want to make sure that, you know, you can provide for your family. So you, you put projects aside, but if you think about it, projects were built up already at this point, what, seven, eight years ago, right? Almost 10 years ago. And, um, 10 years passed by slowly people's, you know, you built up more equity in a home. You have some money saved. And finally, you know, 10 years pass by, then all of a sudden you are in a position where like, well, it's not only that I can afford it, but I really need to do it because right, it, right. it just, you know, technology. I mean, it's amazing mm -hmm. what we see in the technology. Just think about your phones. Uh -huh. But all that gets dragged into the, into the homes, mm -hmm. like all these connected homes, right? And you have an app for everything and, you know, you're, you can turn the TV on. You can order things uh, through your refrigerator. So yeah. it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. No, I mean, li life has changed. Absolutely. And, and after after the we started when we started coming out of this recession, I don't know the world we're living in anymore. I can, I'm like, it's like I came, it's like I woke up from a dream, and the world changed. It seems like the technology changed things overnight. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm old. I'm not old. JD, am I old? I'm not old. Yeah, you're old, man. <laughs> oh, man, you are cruel. But in a good way. Well, a pretty way. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to JD's and tell me how pretty I am. I'm not going to do anything. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with your home with Alex Guthrie. I'm here with Nori. We're talking remodeling.
Alex Guthrie here for my friends at Total Air and Heat. Did you know a typical AC unit runs enough hours in a year equal to a car running 60,000 miles? Total Air and Heat recommends that you tune your system and have it safety checked every six months to ensure peak efficiency, proper operation, and increase the life of the system. Need a new air conditioning and heating system? No problem. Total Air and Heat can replace your equipment with the best equipment on the market today. Train, and you know it's hard to stop a train. So for the best heating and air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020. Or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by Underwood Boot Company, 530 South Main Street. 1854 saw Grapevine's first genuine civic controversy. The postal route was being established. The town needed an official name. Leonard was considered named after A.F. Leonard, who served as the postmaster, justice of the peace, and the county representative in the 12th Texas legislature. When Judge Moorhead was asked, he said, Grapevine would be a good name for our town. And it still is. I'm Anthony Underwood, Underwood Boot Company. We got a lot of tourists, a lot of local business, a lot of foot traffic. Boots are custom. They're top notch. We make everything here. Jose, my boot maker, has been doing it over 50 years. We put out a very high quality product. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. With this salute to Historic Grapevine, I'm Anthony Underwood, Underwood Boot Company. Step back in time. Visit Historic Grapevine, Texas today. Some people think the only thing worse than calling the dentist is calling the foundation repair man. That's why I recommend Hargrave Foundation Repair. Cracks in the walls, doors that won't close, give the folks at Hargrave Foundation a call. Now sometimes it's not the foundation at all. That's why you need an honest, proven company. You see, understanding the soils and weather is a must for a lifetime repair. Family owned and operated since 1968, Hargrave has seen it all. Hargrave Foundation Repair is fully licensed and insured, and their staff stays up to date on all the latest techniques and advances. So call one of the last independently owned foundation companies in North Texas and the exclusive installer of the Chance Helical Pier System. Call Hargrave Foundation Repair at 972 4423 3415. That's 972 442 3415. Hargrave Foundation Repair. 972 442 3415. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. That was a quick, profitable break. Oh, man, I'm glad we did that. <laughs> We're talking remodeling with Nari Dallas. I've got Botan Laszlo Shiloh Preston, Kim Savelsberg. Did I say all that right? Did I get you wrong? (laughs) Did I get you close enough? They're all giving me a hard time. (laughs) We're talking about kind of trends and the way things have changed. And, uh, you know, HGTV and it's a touchy subject. Be careful what you ask next. Man, you ain't kidding. I mean, this it's brutal. It's yeah. brutal. How many how many uh, owners have called you and asked you to remodel their kitchen in an hour? Yeah, yeah, in an I hour. I mean, serious. Five thousand dollars. Right, right. <laughs> and told you they had an old uh, barrel out in the backyard they want you to turn into their kitchen table because they saw that done on hgtv can you just take this old paint and an old barrel and turn it it was beautiful yes yes Uh yes. and and they want to put on their old uh clothes and do it with you yeah uh, (laughs) they can do their own demo i started telling people we charge 10 percent extra if you do your own demo (laughs) Uh, i've been getting the demo how much do we save if we do our own demo I go call me next year after it's finished. Right. Do not call me when it's half finished and you and your husband are fighting. Call me when it's totally finished <laughs> and off the job. Don't call me and say it's in the backyard. Yeah. Off yeah. the job. Done. 
You know, it's a mixed blessing, though. It's, uh, I mean, on the one hand, the, yeah, the expectations are just so incredibly unrealistic. Uh -huh. um, you, if you could really see what some of those spaces look like in reality, not just on camera, uh, you'd understand where some of those dollars didn't go. Right. But at the same time, I, I, I appreciate it because it's really educated the homeowner. I think once upon a time, even back when I first started, really the only thing the homeowner had to go off of was what their friends were doing, what their neighbors were doing, and their window was very small in mm -hmm. the, in, as far as in their mind of what their options were. And so I think shows like HGTV, you know, I definitely see the downside as far as it's, it's not realistic, it's staged, the materials are donated, you know, it's, it's funded, but um, I like the fact that homeowners are getting a chance to see all these different possibilities, and I think that has really driven all these tech, uh, technology and the innovation because it forces manufacturers to respond because they're constantly having to raise the bar because homeowners are just so informed now. How many spouses have you had to call and say, would you please tell your other half, your husband or wife or whatever, to quit calling me with this dumb question. Have you had to do that? Um, I have. I haven't. I, I have. <laughs> I have. What? Alex, what do you mean it's going to take six weeks to get that granite? I am not kidding you. This was an actual conversation I had with a full-grown, mature adult male. <laughs> I saw this weekend... I saw them do it, and they said they did it in a week. Mm -hmm. Where'd you see that? Mm -hmm. On HGTV. Okay, just shut up. Mm -hmm. And I called his wife, and she started, She was at work, and she was started laughing so hard. I thought they were going to fire her at work. And she says, I'll take care of it. <laughs> and, and she called me back, and she said, he's not going to talk to you anymore about this stuff. <laughs> I'm in charge now. And I said, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but Alex, what you're saying that it actually goes back to communication, right? Setting expectations from the very beginning. Uh -huh. And, and when, when you meet with that uh, potential client, that homeowner, and, and really just having a good feel of, you know, what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, who is, we always assign a dedicated person who's going to be always in contact. So we, we eliminate this type of, situations you uh, unplug the tv and unplug the tv if necessary <laughs> what, whatever it requires but it really uh setting those expectations of what's possible what's realistic what's realistic for us mm -hmm. you know you may see crazy things in a tv but you don't like you mentioned i mean that that's the part that is deceiving about hgtv that you don't know what's happening in the background mm -hmm. it looks awesome you know on a camera when it's taken back you know, 20 feet away, but when you get close to it and look at the details, and that's, <laughs> this is so difficult to, uh, to explain to people, you know, it's, is the details when you're living right. in it, when you see every inch of it, literally every single day, the details does mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the most difficult first thing that you have to deal with, with a client? What is the first hurdle? that you generally feel you have that you're going to have to deal with when you're the first expectation that you you go first thing i need to make sure this person understands before i'm going to go in and tear up their house right and it, it goes back to relationships as i mentioned um really for us it's very important for our clients to understand what we have to offer mm -hmm. how we operate are we are a good fit for each other we're not necessarily a good fit for everybody and vice versa. So it's very important to have that communication established in the beginning. We're going to keep talking about, we're going to get into some, what people need to expect when they're really doing a bigger project in a remodel because it's super important. I, I put on my blog on www.yourhomeshow.net, prepping for a remodel in detail with numbers and little dots by the numbers so you can tell when we come back from this break more with the heroes of nori <laughs> don't go away we'll be right back
So what does a garage door do besides enhance your home, protect your family, and secure your vehicles? Well, when you contact the pros at Windsor Door, you'll learn how a truly high-quality garage door company can make a difference. Insulated doors, carriage-style doors, steel and custom wood, Windsor Door has them all and much, much more. And nothing makes a garage door work better than a high-quality opener. That's why the folks at Windsor Door only use LiftMaster garage door openers. And it's no wonder LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Only LiftMaster has patented MyQ technology, which alerts you if you forget to close your garage door and lets you close it from anywhere, anytime with built-in Wi-Fi technology. It also has battery backups, so you can get in even when the power's out. So contact a Windsor Door dealer near you at windsordoor.com. You have to sell your gorgeous but suddenly unaffordable house. Now, who will buy it? These guys buy. You have to sell your mom and dad's old run-down house. Now, who will buy it? These guys buy. You have to sell your crazy Aunt Zelda's house. You know, the one with all the cats. These guys buy. Taj Mahal? These guys buy. Old Musty Dump? These guys buy. Just plain ugly? These guys buy. Sell your property now. As is, no fees, no repairs, no waiting. Theseguysbuy.com. 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 The Cup Series rolls into Dover. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Jimmy gets the break. Larson to the outside. Truex there as well. NASCAR stars try to outrun each other. Easier said than done when you're face-to-face -face with a monster. In Dover. We're going to wad up about a half a dozen. Now make it a dozen cars. The AAA 400 drive for autism. Johnson will surge forward. And he'll go to the lead. Sunday at noon on the Motor Racing Network. NASCAR from the Mon Mile tomorrow at noon on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. Thinking about doing a remodel, a renovation, or you got to do a remodel or a renovation? Stay with us. The meat of the matter. Step one. Somebody calls you up and they say, I got to do a tree fell through my roof. I've got to remodel my master suite, man. I've got an oak limb. I've got an oak limb in my, in my room. What's your process? Well, obviously make sure you uh, mitigate the damage first. So it doesn't get any worse Then right. cover the roof, take the limb out and cover the roof. Then obviously, um, relationships again, I, I keep saying that our, our business is built on relationships. And I believe that Nari as, as an organization is truly built on relationships and every, every business truly to make sense, it should be built on relationships. Um, what I mean by that is really make sure that you're comfortable with the person you're working with, mm -hmm. you know, whether as a designer, contractor, as a roofer, it doesn't really matter. Uh, some of these projects we do, I mean, you, you asked specifically a, a master suite, right? That that's not, something you can just like sure we start tomorrow right it requires planning it requires a process it's and the bigger the projects are you kind of engaging I, I always say it's a marriage we we literally do projects that last close to a year from it gets design very to, personal absolutely it's a very personal thing when you go into somebody's home particularly I, i'm bath. sorry to interrupt you <laughs> but but a master bath sure. or, a, or a kitchen or where, mm -hmm. where people live the most important moments of their, their absolutely. Day. I'm I'm laughing because it usually comes up in a, in a question at some point while you're talking design and you know what people like and how do you live your everyday life and you know you ask you ask the client at some point well you know do you shower together is it important to have two separate sure. controls things like that and sometimes things you couldn't ask in the fifties yeah maybe not. <laughs> You, you probably get a now. different answer for it, yes. Right. You get shot. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's it's very personal, like you said. It's very mm -hmm. involving. It's really for us as remodelers, um, to really and designers to really do our job well is to really need to understand our clients. And that's mm -hmm. why the communication relationship is very important. I I can speak for everyone, but I believe that 
whoever is part of Nari, whoever is truly representing the organization, they're, you know, what they want to achieve is really make people's life better. That's why we're all here. We're mm -hmm. not doing it for the profit. It's, I cannot believe somebody who's truly in this business and believes in it, you know, it, 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 it's more than that. Well, You're making a difference. Remodeling is a passion. Absolutely. Because a remodeler is a, an artist, mm -hmm. a sculptor. Seriously. It's a right. craftsmanship. Right. I mean, it, it is. It is. I mean, I, 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 look, if I was doing construction, residential construction for money, I'd be building new homes. I would not be remodeling because, believe me, you're not going to get out of this thing. Well, if you get out of it, Rich, good for you, but I ain't. <laughs> well, it's like Botan said. I've I've been on projects with contractors, and you know, I, being in the business myself. But it, one thing that I've always noticed is there's a sincere desire. Here's this person in your home that you might have just met, and you're explaining what you want, your vision, your goals, and this person is standing there genuinely wanting to figure out a way to get that for you right and so even if you do run up against obstacles like space or budget or time mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to figure out how to get you what you want and that takes a really unique personality in a in a in a dedication you know it, it takes a commitment to the person and a commitment to the house mm -hmm. I mean that's mm -hmm. the the part that I the last guest I had and we're talking about old homes and to me, I take it real personal when I walk into a house that's particularly an older home. Mm -hmm. and I look at that thing as a as a living a living structure. I look at that as something that's been around for a long time, mm -hmm. and I respect it. And I want to leave it with, you know, just knowing I want people to look at that and say that guy respect this mm -hmm. thing's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I am personally. That's how I feel about it. So you can't have any other kind of attitude other than sort of an artsy, I don't know, you know, you've got to treat it like a, it's an art palette right. when, when you're in there right. without getting crazy about it. You know, I mean, okay. Yes. I, I feel the same way. Even if it's just a, you know, even if the house is 30, 40 years old, mm -hmm. I've said that to clients before, you know, you want to respect the architecture, you want to bring it up to date, but it's just like a woman, you know, like when a woman's feeling a little bit dowdy and dumpy and maybe a little older, you know, goes in and gets a makeover and a new haircut and a sassy new black leather jacket, and she's got a whole new lease on life. <laughs> and that's what I feel like we're doing for our homes. That's what I do too. JD, do you do that? <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I was I was stuck on the sassy. Part. I came in here the other day, and I had just been to the to the uh, hairstylist, and I came in in my black jacket and my my black sassy new thing, and JD was <laughs> he brought me flowers for the next day. <laughs> it was my red shoes. Um, okay, no, I know what you're saying. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I Shiloh doesn't know what to think of me yet. But no, I understand what you're saying. I understand you. You're just you've got to love the house. You got to show some love. Give it new life. House. Give yeah. it new life. Yes. It doesn't matter how old it is, or how dumpy she's feeling, or how dumpy it's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so you go in and you you establish a relationship with the owner, and you make sure that you're all communicating and kind of getting on the same page and. You've got to feel good. You've, you're interviewing them, too. Absolutely. And, I mean, and you've that, got to feel good about your relationship with them. It, it's always a two-way interview. It's always a two-way street, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's not just... Here's, here's my philosophy. Business is only business if both parties are happy. Not at the beginning when you're having just this imaginary conversation. So what could be but Really, truly, when the business is done, right? you left with something, you know, like you have done everything you could have done to do your job right in, in the client's interest. You get reimbursed for, you know, for your time and effort, but ultimately you still um, thought of as the contractor that like, yes, we want to do the next project. We're going to give your name to the next person because we, you care, right? And that's what it comes down to. So uh, doing the interviewing in both ways is very critical. I have I don't know, probably close to 100 questions I asked. 
So right. you, but you'll run into uh, a, a homeowner that'll enter that you'll go into a situation and they're going to tell you, I'm taking, I, now I've had them tell me they're taking 10 bits mm-hmm. and they'll, mm-hmm. and you're like, well, then you're treating everybody you're talking to. It's like, you're looking for the best deal for new tires on your car. And it's, it's, it, you can't do that in a remodel. Right. I mean, it's not, we're not all the same. Absolutely. It's, you can't, you're not picking out of a deck of cards here. Frankly, in my experience, if, if you're really talking with 10 different companies, you really should take a pause and look at yourself. There's, there's something is really off. It's very hard, hard for me to believe doing this for over 15 years now that you have to talk to 10 different people. You know, because any reputable company it would probably tell you from the very beginning of what the process is they would go in. Maybe your expectations are very off. Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you had bad experience and now you feel like you just have to be, you know, the investigator of the situation. But it's really, yes, and, and we, we run into those situations as well. And that's why it's so much more important to have this interview. Ask those questions. Don't be afraid. This mm-hmm. needs to be a completely transparent, open conversation understand you know the details right Mm -hmm. um and and that eliminates kind of the um the unknown eliminates the assumptions don't Mm -hmm. assume it that's that's the problem in this industry a lot of times people assume oh i thought you're gonna do this but nobody ever specified the details of it then i thought something and you thought something else right so again communication and and really in interviewing but getting back to nari and what really nari stands for is um Companies who are part of NARI, they will be very, very similar as far as scope of work, quality, and uh, and even cost, right? Well, because you have a process, you have a vetting process for whoever, for all your members. And so they have to meet a a certain criteria before they can even get to your directory. Absolutely. It's not not for everyone. Right. And there's a, you are involuntarily abiding to a code of ethics. Mm -hmm. And we as industry members, we hold each other accountable. To, for the success of the industry, mm-hmm. right? We don't, and sometimes happens that someone gets kicked out. We don't mm-hmm. like to do that, but it, you know, we stand for the right. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting back to my original note, you know, interviewing the different people, people within NAR and especially, we probably provide the same, very, very similar service, but it's gonna come down to the personality. I may get along well with you, I may not get along well with Shiloh or vice mm-hmm. versa. Mm-hmm. And that's a bad recipe. Mm-hmm. Well. Um, what I'm seeing happening a lot in the industry, and I know uh, in your, you, know, you do primarily kitchens. Kitchens, baths, laundry rooms, uh, medium so rooms. So smaller, yeah. mm-hmm. you're one roomers. Pretty much. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what I see, the, a big trend right now is people are doing these pay services for referrals mm-hmm. for contractors and for or they'll go to, the, I know there's not an Angie's list anymore, but it's one of those, because they're doing some such heavy marketing. Call right. call us and get a referral for a contractor or for whoever. Right. And it's almost as if you can go and get a bunch of names and you go get this person that's paid $50 for the lead, mm-hmm. and by golly, they're going to be the right person. Right. Don't you even worry about it because they paid to get your phone number. So, you know, they're the right person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I've, I've been talking to some people about this recently, and I know these have been around for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And one of the problems when you have an area like ours that where our population's exploding and there's tons of people moving in here, they don't know anybody. And there are, there's a lot of them looking for somebody to do even just small things for them. Mm-hmm. And they don't know where to turn. They, they go at, boy, my, my Better Business Bureau listing, and I'm, I've got an A-plus listing, and I have for years. I'm getting hundreds of dings on that thing every month. You know, people are just f- trying to find some way to find someone, yeah, you know, to mm-hmm. find somebody mm-hmm. they just can trust any right. way they can do it, right? And so that's, but that d- do you feel like that is competing with you in your business? Is that taking business away from you? 
You know, it's really interesting that you mentioned that because I, I actually don't. Um, because I think a lot of clients, the clients that we deal with or the size of projects that we deal with, I think they get it. They, they get it that they don't want some random person coming into their home. Mm-hmm. And we, we've talked too about the com- the competitive bids thing because there's just too much that you can't possibly know. You know, is he going to use these kinds of screws or that kind of screws or this ton air conditioning or right. you can't possibly know when you're comparing those bids. So it all boils down to trust. Mm-hmm. Um, so those homeowners who are really looking for somebody, you know, yeah, if I'm just going to have a, a sprinkler head replaced or something, the trust level doesn't have to be as high. But if someone's going to basically blow up my master bath in the middle of my house right. and I'm going to be out of commission for several months, right. uh, it's like Botan said, I mean, it's like a marriage. You you have to, you can't possibly know what you need to do, know to make all the right decisions. So you have to trust that person but that they're going to be with. in your house <laughs> they're going to be in your house they're, in your they're, business <laughs> they're going to be in your closet they're going to know everything about you yes <laughs> under your vanity thing yes. <laughs> and you're not going to be able to sit there and watch them every minute of every day trust yeah. is and absolute paramount absolutely. Yeah. absolutely yeah no question about it and and you want a seasoned per- you've got to have somebody out there that can make a call mm-hmm. when there's a problem guess what there's going to be a problem there's always a problem is how do you deal with it is what already sets us apart. So there's going to be a surprise. Right. Somebody's going to open something up mm-hmm. and they're going to go, oh, we just cut that little blue wire and we have no idea what that thing's for. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. It's yeah. just a little bitty blue wire. And, you know, in the new age of technology, I don't know what that wire's for. It could be. It used to be a sprinkler wire, but I don't know. It's a, an alarm wire or a computer wire. I have no idea. Right, right. And you can't just call whoever, you know. <laughs> Life's not simple anymore for a remodeler. I don't know what the little blue wire's for. And when you're opening up a wall and you look in the wall, it's not like opening up a Christmas present. It, present it's like opening up a can of worms you know ma'am i hate to tell you this but i just opened up your wall and it's full of worms it's awful (laughs) it's called remodeling the good news is i'll be finished in six months We're going to take a quick break, and we come back more with Nari. Stay tuned. So what does a garage door do besides enhance your home, protect your family, and secure your vehicles? Well, when you contact the pros at Windsor Door, you'll learn how a truly high-quality garage door company can make a difference. Insulated doors, carriage-style doors, steel and custom wood, Windsor Door has them all and much, much more. And nothing makes a garage door work better than a high-quality opener. That's why the folks at Windsor Door only use LiftMaster garage door openers. And it's no wonder LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Only LiftMaster has patented MyQ technology, which alerts you if you forget to close your garage door and lets you close it from anywhere, anytime with built-in Wi-Fi technology. It also has battery backup, so you can get in even when the power's out. So contact a Windsor Door dealer near you at windsordoor.com. 1160 AM KBDP proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by Grapevine Power Sports. In 1889, the J.E. Fausto opens on Main Street. It's now Grapevine's oldest remaining brick building. Eggs sell for 10 cents per dozen. Butter is 20 cents per pound. And chickens are 250 a dozen. I'm Aaron McWhorter with Grapevine Power Sports. When I bought the dealership, I came in to buy a four-wheeler. They were a freestanding Kawasaki dealership. And I said, Dennis, I don't mean to pry. Are you interested in selling this place? And he said, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but we're fixing to put it on the market. I said, Dennis, I'll take it. 
in the last three years, we've done 60% increase. The mayor's a customer of mine. The city manager's a customer of mine. A lot of friends that live here still. The small town feel right in the middle of the big metroplex. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. When I say Italy, what comes to mind? Venice. Capri. Oh my gosh, Capri was marvelous. The views, the cliffside views, or traveling to Sorrento. Pirello Tours. Oh, Pirello Tours, for sure. Pirello. Hi, I'm Steve Pirello of Pirello Tours. With over 70 years of tour experience to Italy, it's no wonder Pirello Tours is synonymous with travel to Italy. I think of the culture. And to walk up to certain areas and touch a wall and think, well, this wall is like 3,000 years old. Being on a Pirello Tour on our anniversary was better than anything I can remember member ever on an anniversary. I personally approve every itinerary to ensure a stress-free once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Sunday! Call now for your free insider's guide to Perillo's Italy. Call in the next 30 minutes and qualify for a $100 gift card when you travel with us. Call 800-547-6018. 800-547-6018. 800-547-6018. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We have a few minutes left. We have just about enough time to... Kind of wrap up what we were talking about and we didn't cover nearly enough ground i think we're gonna have to do this some more what do you guys think there's definitely a lot to talk about i mean we're just we haven't even gotten to the remodeling part we're just now talking to the customer mm-hmm. man there's a lot of a lot of fun stuff to come. there's a lot of fun stuff and you're you're uh how long have you been doing kitchens shiloh 20 years you don't look like you're 20 years old you're not old enough to have been doing this for <laughs> sure baby slip it on over here uh, uh you don't look like you're old enough been doing this 20 years have i known you 20 years uh well i started actually in the cayman islands in 1998 well, i haven't known you 20 years no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh hey my plan is to move to panama anyway <laughs> I'll continue from down there. Uh, wow. You yeah. started in the Cayman Islands? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have anything else to say <laughs> to you. And how long have you been in business? So I had my business for 15 years uh-huh. as, as a business, but I was I grew up in the industry basically since as a kid. And so you've been in Dallas 15 years? I've been in Dallas for close to 18 now. 18? Yes. And you started, so you started your business here? I started my business here, yes. And and you're doing whole, you're doing whole home remodels? Right. So most of our projects are a larger scale project. We, we still do kitchens and baths, but uh-huh. we, we tend to do a lot of uh, whole house projects. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming in and spending your day with me and, um, I think that the remodeling industry is in great hands with Nori. I think Nori is in great hands with you at the helm. No, thank you. And uh, how 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 are you enjoying being the the big Kahuna at Nori? <laughs> is that a lot of fun? You know, it, Alex, it's I don't actually think of it that way. It, it's really an honor and a privilege to to be at this point you know uh-huh. and, and and representing an organization i'm i'm really honored i met a lot of great people uh-huh. i'm surrounded by just a tremendous talent and mm-hmm. and and really just elevating the the brand of nari elevating the industry and and bringing bringing back the craftsmanship that everyone knew of remodeling it's really important so having having amazing people around me it's is just it's just really uh i never thought of this i mean this is just kind of falling in my lap and and I just went with it, and it's oh my gosh, it's awesome! It's it's awesome, isn't it? It's yes. awesome. Yeah, you'll never forget it. I sure I will. You'll probably never volunteer to do it again either. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like the it's rest, too, of it's too early to say. It. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't over yet, brother. That's right. That's right. And so, Chalo, are you an officer in at Nori? I am. I am on the board this year. So, how far do you get to the the top? Are you working your way up to 
are you in, in the executive part? Not yet, and there's a few ahead of me. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm, but I'm learning from the best. Uh huh. Right yeah, now. you are. You are. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. And how long have you been part of Nori? Uh, it's been, gosh, at least five or six years. Yeah, um, I'm more than that. Yeah. So pre <laughs> they, let me put it this way: the kitchen source has been uh -huh. uh, a part of Nori for. 13, 15 years, uh -huh. yeah, and I've been there for eight. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I really appreciate you coming today. Thank and, Kim, thank you for forcing for forcing these people in here. <laughs> You're such a taskmaster. And next week, I'm going to do a solar show. We're going to have Ch Charles Crumley from Aztec Renewables, and we're going to talk about solar and wind. It's going to be, should be a very interesting show. Um, that has turned into a very uh, wild industry in Texas, really kind of all over, particularly with these um, tariffs and, uh, and the discussions we've been having with the Chinese, which haven't been uh, very friendly to a lot of people. I want to thank you. Botand. Thank you. And Miss Shiloh and Kim. Thank you. Thank you, David Prezios Preziosi. Thank you, Phil Crone. Thank you, Mr. J. D. Wells. A privilege, sir. Yes, Mr. Executive Producer. You're awesome. And thank you to my crack research team, Mrs. Guthrie. And most of all, thank you to my listeners and my Facebook followers. Be kind to each other and show a stranger some love this week. We need more of that. And we're going to uh, have a summer show up this week. It's going to be 90s. So we're going to lose spring. We're going to gain summer. Wear your shorts. Don't, don't run anybody off the road. You know, no more road rage. Did you go to the NRA thing yesterday, Mr. Wells? No, I didn't. I had a little thing called a radio show. It was. Oh, you did? Are you going to go today? Uh, probably not. I've got work to do. What? I'm just beginning my work. Today. You're the boss. I know. I got here yesterday at 7:30, and I uh, and then I uh, stayed until about midnight. So yeah, I got a lot of work. Oh, uh, glamorous life. Maybe life. maybe I'm some great. napping. Maybe some napping. Glamorous life of a highly paid radio. Well, it's been a great show. We had a wonderful show today. Everything worked. Nothing fell apart. Thanks, everybody. We re I really do appreciate it. Until next week, this is Alex Guthrie signing off. Have a wonderful day.